In today's video, I'm going to show you how to build and animate this new morphic line graph in PowerPoint. I'm Aaron Limpany. Let's get started. As usual, we're going to start with a blank new slide and go over to the Design tab, Format Background, and we're going to do a solid color fill. Our color is going to be E7E8ED. Next, we're going to go back to the Home tab and we're going to create our horizontal lines for the Y axis. So we're going to go to Shapes, we're going to go to Line, and then we're just going to click and drag while holding Shift. We're going to drag out a little line here. It doesn't matter how long it is right now because we're going to go to the Shape Format section and we're going to change the width down to 0.2 centimeters. Then we're going to go over to the Fill tab. We're going to keep it at Solid Line. We're going to change the color to A1A5B9. And then we're going to change the weight to 3. Finally, we're going to go to Cap Type and change it from Flat to Round. Next, we're going to zoom in on our object here and we're going to click and hold Option and Shift while dragging to duplicate this five times for a total of six of these. Then we'll zoom back out and with the bottom object selected, we're going to come back over to the Size section. We're going to go to Position and we're going to change the vertical position to 15 centimeters and this is from top left corner. Then we're going to select the top line and we're going to change its vertical position using the same process to five centimeters. Then we're gonna select all of these tick marks. We're gonna go back over to size and we're gonna change the horizontal position to six centimeters. Then we're gonna go up to a line and we're gonna distribute these vertically. Finally, we're gonna grab this bottom line. We're gonna go back over to size and we're gonna change its width to 18 centimeters. Then we're gonna go to a line and we're going to align it center. While we're here, we can also hit Control Option Command G to show the guides, or you can go up to the top view menu and select them from there. And from here, we're gonna hold Option while clicking this center guide. We're gonna drag a guide out to nine centimeters away on either side. So these are gonna sit right at the end of this bottom line. So now we have guides on both sides, and you can go ahead and hide those if they're in your way, or you can keep them out. Again, that's Control Option Command G to hide and unhide the guides. Next, let's add our text over on the Y axis. So we're just gonna double click and we're gonna change the font to Gibson Light. And we're gonna change the color to our shadow gray color that we used for these lines. And we're gonna change the point size to 14. Then in this first text box, we're gonna type 500 and we're gonna drag this box up to align it with the top tick mark here. Then we're gonna go over to the size tab in the format shape panel and we're gonna change the horizontal position to four centimeters. Next, we're just gonna duplicate this by holding option and shift to drag these into place. These do not need to be perfectly aligned except for the bottom one. That one you want to align center with the tick mark at the bottom as well. Then you'll select all of these text boxes and you'll go to arrange, align, distribute vertically. Next, we're just gonna rename each one of these. So we're gonna go 500, 400, 300, 200, and 100. Once you've renamed those, just hit Command C and Command V to copy and paste, then drag one of these down to the X axis. After moving it, go ahead and center the text within the text box and duplicate this five times. And then you'll want to align the right text box with the right side and you'll see the guide pop up here. And you wanna align the left text box with the left side as well and you'll see that guide appear too. Then you'll select all of these text boxes. You'll go to Arrange, Align, and Distribute Horizontally. Finally, you'll click into each of these text boxes and you'll rename them the month names January through June. Once you've renamed those, just grab one of the month text boxes and copy and paste it in place, and then bring it up to the top here. We're gonna change the font size to 28, and we're gonna change the weight from Gibson Light to Gibson Medium. Then we're gonna to go to Arrange, Align, and Center. Head over to the Size panel here, and move the vertical position to 1.5 centimeters. Then we'll go back to the Fill tab. We're gonna to go to Text Options and hit Gradient Fill. And as you can see, mine has already loaded because I've just built this slide, but you're gonna do a purple and a pink color. And the hex code for that purple color is gonna be 5827ED. And the hex code for the pink color is gonna be DC38FF. Once you've updated the gradient colors, just change the angle to 45 degrees then double click into the title box and change it to devices sold. Next, we're gonna draw our graph line. So come up to shapes and under lines, you're gonna go to this one, which is curve. Now it'll really help here to view those guides we created. So hit control option command G or go up to the view menu and click view guides. Now drawing with this curves tool is very easy. You just click 
to add points wherever you want them and PowerPoint automatically curves the line for you. So when you draw your line, make sure you start on this left guide and I started a little below 200 and then make sure you don't exceed the scale as you click through, but you can make this line look however you want it to. So I'm just gonna click here on January and I'm gonna put points approximately each month, but since this is a curved line, it doesn't really matter exactly where we fall. So we're just gonna kinda follow this trend a little bit. We're gonna go up as we go into spring. May's got a big spike, and then a little bit down into June. And now on this last one, make sure that you're clicking with the last point on this right side guide. So wherever you put this point, make sure it sits on this right guide and just click. And now you'll see the curve continues. It's not gonna stop until we tell it to. So you're gonna tell it to stop by clicking escape. Now you're gonna change your width to 4.5. We're gonna change the cap type to round. And we're gonna change from solid line to gradient line. And then we're gonna drag off these two center stops here. We're gonna change the first stop to the purple color we created earlier. And we're gonna change the second stop to the pink color we created earlier. And then we're gonna change the angle to 270 degrees. And then you can just verify that your line is the correct length by going over to the size. And as you can see, we've got it perfectly 18 centimeters because we used our guides. If yours isn't at 18 centimeters, just change the width now and then align this center. Finally, we're gonna add the gradient underfill below this line. So let's start by zooming in because you'll need to be pretty precise as you draw this one out. Then we'll go back to our home tab and under shapes, we're gonna go to freeform. This one is under lines right next to curves. This will be easiest to draw if you start at this top right corner of the shape because our shape is gonna take up this whole area beneath the curve, between the curve and the x-axis. So if you start at this corner where this line intersects with the guideline that you drew on the right side earlier, you're just gonna click right there and then you're gonna hold shift. And as you can see, when I hold shift, it snaps it vertically. So it'll snap it to 90 degrees. So you hold shift, come down to the x-axis and click right in the middle of the x-axis. Then you'll come to the left side, hold shift again, and click where the x-axis intersects this left guide. And then we'll hold shift one more time and click where this left guide intersects with our graph line. Then we're not gonna hold shift anymore, but we're just gonna click along our graph and make sure when you click that none of the line that you're drawing is outside of this graph line. So you, do, you wouldn't want it to appear here. You wouldn't want to click here because then you can see the line. You want to make sure that you're coloring inside the lines the whole time. And you're basically just going to trace the curvature of your graph. So the curvier your graph is, the trickier this is going to be and the more segments you'll need to draw. But just go slow and steady and keep clicking. And it's pretty simple to keep this within the lines and you're just gonna draw until you get back. And as you get close to the end, you'll see PowerPoint will actually fill this in for us. So that's how you know you're closing the shape. So click to close the shape and look at that, we are in place. Now you're just gonna go up under the shape format tools and you're gonna send this to the back and look, we've got a shape that perfectly follows the line of the graph and it stays behind the X axis. Then we're gonna go to no line and change this to a gradient fill. Then we'll click on this first stop, the purple one, and we're gonna change the transparency to 80%. Then we'll click the pink stop and we'll change its transparency to 30%. And then we'll zoom back out and you can just hit Control Option Command G to hide those guides. And look at that, that's a beautiful slide right there. So we're gonna name some layers and make some groups just to make animation easier. So let's start by selecting this first tick mark and the 100, just hit Option Command G to group. And then under Shape Format, we're gonna open up the selection pane there's our group and we're gonna name this 100 and do the same for each one of these numbers on the Y axis. Once you've named those, just select each one of the text boxes on the X axis and rename it so it corresponds with the name of the month on the X axis. Next, select your title and just rename that one, device is sold. Select your X axis, rename it X axis. Select the graph line, rename it, you guessed it, graph line. And finally select the underfill and just rename this gradient underfill. Perfect, now once you've renamed everything, your selection pane should look something like this. Now the most important part is that your gradient underfill is on the bottom, below your x-axis and below your graph line. That way it stays behind these items that are hiding it. Now finally, let's animate. So let's open the animation tab and let's start by clicking on our title here and we're just gonna do a wipe in. So let's open the animation pane Let's change our timing for this one to with previous because we want all of these to start as we open this slide. And then let's change the duration to a second. Then we'll click back on our title animation. We'll go to animation painter and we'll click on January. We'll select January in the animation pane. We'll change the duration to 0.5 seconds and we'll change the delay to 0.25 seconds. 
Next, you're gonna reselect January in the field here. You're gonna double click Animation Painter and you're gonna apply this animation to all of the rest of the months. Once you've done that, click back on Animation Painter to deselect it and then you're just gonna increase the delay from left to right by 0.25 on each one of these. So it'll be 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 1, 1 1.25 and 1.5. Once you've added those delays, select the X axis and we're gonna add a stretch in animation. So you're gonna go down and find that one, change the property here to from left, change the start to with previous and change the duration to 1.5 seconds. Next, we'll do the y-axis labels. So select the first group at the bottom here and let's add a fly-in from left. So that's on the first page here. So we'll do a fly-in. We'll change the property to from left. We'll change to smooth start and smooth end. We'll change the start timing to with previous. Keep the duration of 0.5 seconds and we're gonna change the delay on this first one to 0.25 seconds. And again, we're just gonna increase the delay by 0.25 seconds. Go ahead and animation paint this onto the rest of them. Once you've animated the y-axis label groups, let's grab our graph line and let's do a wipe in. We'll change the property to from left. We'll change the timing to with previous. We'll change the duration to two seconds and we'll change the delay to 0.15 seconds. Then we'll select the line in the field, we'll hit Animation Painter, and we'll paint that onto the gradient. And that's it, let's play our slide and see how we did. Perfect, looks really smooth. As you can see, this is a super flexible application, so you can use this for any type of line graph. You can just change the type of curve and shape that you put under it, and you can make this work for any data that you're presenting. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe and click that notification bell so you can stay up to date when I release more content so you can keep your PowerPoint skills sharp. And if you have any suggestions for future videos or any comments, please leave those in the comments section below. I do read them all and I do make videos based on what you recommend. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.